thank you all very much for, for joining us today. You know, tonight the uh, President is uh, scheduled to give another speech about his uh, job plans. And the American people, I believe, really want specifics, not another speech and uh, more spending. And we are here today to offer the Western Caucus Jobs Frontier, which is breaking down Washington's barriers to America's red, white, and blue jobs. Uh, we're here as members of both the House and the Senate Western Caucuses. This is something we've worked on uh, together. And these are actually concrete plans that will create jobs now. The, uh, the Frontier's plan supports bills that uh, develop American energy, uh, that cuts through red tape, that uh, strengthens the American mining sector, that uh, promotes agriculture, ranching, and forestry, and absolutely reduces lawsuit abuse. Uh, these are bills that could be acted upon immediately. And all we need is a willing partner in the White House. So we encourage the White House to take a serious look at, uh, at these proposals and then support them. And with that, I'd like to introduce Steve Pierce, the chairman of the House Western Caucus. Thank you very much, Senator. Uh, again, he mentions that we have issued our report. As I have gone around New Mexico since January, people have been frantic for specifics. They're tired of just the generalities that we need to reform things, we need to make it where we're creating jobs. And so the Western Caucus, under the leadership of Senator Barrasso and others, uh, and I thank leadership of both the House and the Senate, have put together this jobs frontier. Forty different bills listed in here which specifically create jobs as they're enacted. Also, there's the recognition that regulatory policy is in the process in the next year of killing another three, uh, three million more jobs. And so this legislation is intended to, to bring some common sense balance to those regulations, saying that, yes, we need to accomplish certain environmental things, we need to accomplish the, uh, the species protection, but at the same time, we need to protect the jobs of the American people. It's a dramatic report, it's specific, and it's a, a combination of the House and Senate uh, Western Caucus working together. I would again thank the senators for their hard work and their leadership on this. At this time, I would like to introduce Senator McCain uh, from uh, the, our neighboring state of Arizona. He's got the comments about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I will be uncharacteristically brief uh, since I, we have a number of our Western Caucus here, and thanks to the leadership of Senator Barrasso and Congressman Pierce, we are here together. I want to mention two very important issues. One of them is free trade. Two and a half years ago, in his first address to the Congress, the President of the United States uh, advocated ratification of free trade agreements with Korea, with South Korea, Colombia, and Panama. The interesting and entertaining aspect of this and, and then repeatedly, in every address to Congress, he would have one line about uh, advocacy for ratification of these free trade agreements. The President has yet to submit these trade agreements to the Congress of the United States for ratification. Remarkable. And tonight, I'm sure he will again call for the ratification by Congress of these three free trade agreement and still has not submitted them. And it's amazing. The, uh, the Farm Bureau tells us that it could generate two and a half billion dollars in economic activity, 27 million dollars in my state alone. Now, why is it that the president hadn't submitted it? It's all got to do with trade adjustment assistance, billions of dollars that have been given to community colleges, to pork barrel projects, to other wasteful spending, <coughs> and they want it at the level of the stimulus package. We are willing to negotiate trade adjustment assistance, but we certainly aren't going to uh, agree to negotiate uh, a level of trade adjustment assistance which is in the billions of taxpayers' dollars in these hard times. The other proposal that I want to mention is with the, that Senator Kyle, Congressman Flake, and I have advocated for six years, and that's the Resolution Copper Land Exchange Bill that would result in the largest copper ore body in North America, right in Arizona. Independent economic studies show that if we open this mine, that it would create 3,700 total jobs with $220 million in annual wages in the 60-year lifetime of this 
mine. And this proposal to mine the richest copper ore in, in the North America ever discovered, rather than having to import copper from other countries, would have profound effect on the economy of the hardest hit part of the state of Arizona. And this proposal is being blocked by Democratic members of both houses and by the environmental community and not supported by the administration. We need to pass it. Cynthia Lummis. Well, I do want to applaud our chairman, uh, both Senator Barrasso and Congressman Pierce, for bringing this document forward uh, with the collaboration of members of the Western Caucus, which is huge now. And that's because of a recognition that American energy, making it affordable, clean, technologically advanced, and able to serve Americans all over this country is an important part of the Western agenda, and it's also an important part of the American agenda. It's also an emphasis on conservation, stewardship, and capable management in a way that also shows if we take the shackles off unreasonable regulation uh, and empower people who are excellent stewards of our land and have the capability through years of knowledge and uh, revisiting prior practices on the environment are able to move forward and to produce uh, the goods that are needed in this country to have quality houses and homes, quality energy for to heat our homes and, and to transport us around this country. It is a positive agenda because it rejects the litigation uh, standard by which late 20th century uh, conservation occurred and embraces a 21st century model of conservation, which sees the development of jobs and our natural resources and careful environmental stewardship and conservation going hand in hand. And as previous speakers noted, it is a recognition not only of what we can do differently, but exactly how we can do it differently and the number of jobs it will create around this country and particularly in the West. This is not only a jobs frontier agenda for the West, it is a jobs frontier agenda for the nation. I'm proud to be a part of it. I'm proud to be uh, one of the uh, participants in the Western Caucus. This is a model for everyone. And I would like to now yield uh, to my former House colleague who has joined his colleagues in the Senate from the wonderful state of Nevada, uh, Senator Dean Heller. Good. Thank you very much. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia, and uh, to uh, Senator Barrasso and uh, Congressman Pierce. Uh, congratulations. I think this is job well done. Uh, this Jobs Frontier um, booklet uh, impacts no other state more uh, than the state of Nevada. Uh, we are the state with the highest unemployment, highest foreclosure, highest bankruptcy, and if there's anything that could create jobs uh, in the West and impact the state of Nevada more. Uh, this pamphlet does that. Uh, uh, there are specific projects in there that affect Southern Nevada, like the uh, Nellis Dunes Recreation Area would create jobs immediately. But there are other areas that I think are just as important that are emphasized in this, specifically in the uh, area of mining. Um, if you try to permit a, a new mine today, going through the process takes you 10 years. You take other development, developed uh, countries in the world, and the average is two years, yet it takes 10 years. 10 years to develop and to get a permit to open a gold or silver mine in the state of Nevada and anywhere in the West. And I believe that needs to change. If we do that, we could create tens of thousands of jobs, not only in the state of Nevada, but across the West, if we would just get the federal government out of the way. Another area that I think is critically important and also mentioned is uh, green energy. Uh, we have problems. Uh, we have more geothermal sites in northern Nevada, and the uh, solar energy that's available in southern Nevada, if they would just allow transmission lines so that we can move that energy from point A to point B, um, we could uh, create the, the green energy job that the administration continues to tout. But we can't put those transmission lines in place. That being the case, obviously we can't create those jobs. So if we get those transmission lines in, if we get the administration out of the way, create the green jobs that they can continue to tout, 
uh, we can create a tremendous amount of jobs, not just in Nevada, but across the West. Again, my congratulations uh, for the Western Caucus and their efforts on the uh, jobs frontier. Thank you. John Fish. Thanks. Well, I want to compliment my neighbor from Wyoming, Senator Brasso, and Congressman Pierce for uh, their leadership in the Western Caucus. Uh, many of us have, are, are members of that good organization. It continues to grow. And not too long ago, the Western Caucus put out a report uh, documenting uh, this administration's assault on the West called the War on the West. And it almost seems at times that the, the administration is uh, kind of almost openly hostile to the way in which uh, people in the West make their living. And, um, you know, it, it overlooks the fact that there is so much opportunity for the uh, ideas put forward in the, in the jobs frontier by the Western Caucus to, uh, to create jobs in this country and get the economy growing again. And, uh, you know, you look at it whether it's in the area of energy production and there is an abundance of resources in the West, uh, oil and gas, coal, renewables, uh, whether it's agriculture, uh, farming and ranching, recreation, there are so many ways in which uh, Western states can contribute to getting this economy back on track and creating jobs uh, out there that um, it's uh, sometimes uh, we're at a loss to explain why the administration takes the, the attack that they do uh, toward uh, the Western states and many of the job producing ideas that, uh, that, are, are, that are available and that are being originated in those states. So I'm, I'm proud to be a part of this effort and part of the Western Caucus. Uh, as I traveled across the state of South Dakota during the month of August, the one thing I heard over and over and over again is get the government off our backs. Excessive regulation and red tape are hamstringing our job creators ability to, to get out there to invest in their companies and to create jobs. Uh, that's something that we have to change. And I hope that the president in his remarks tonight will embrace many of the ideas uh, that are included in the uh, jobs frontier because uh, they could go a long ways toward uh, addressing what is the primary and most urgent concern facing the American people and that is economic growth and job creation getting people in America uh, back to work and uh, the ideas put forth by the Western Caucus and the jobs frontier uh, I think can go a long ways toward uh, toward addressing that goal. Thank you. Uh, Corey Gardner. Well, thank you. Uh, Corey Gardner from Colorado. Uh, my district represents the Eastern Plains, Rocky Mountain National Park, Pawnee National Grassland, some of the greatest agricultural land in this country. Uh, and the opportunities that we have with trade, the opportunities that we have to uh, access our energy resources uh, should be unlimited. Unfortunately, oftentimes hands are tied when it comes to the development of our resources, when it comes to uh, the, the progress that we can make in agriculture on our ranch lands and our farmlands. Uh, I, earlier this year, passed the Jobs and Energy Permitting Act out of the House with bipartisan support a bill that's been introduced in the Senate by Senator Lisa Murkowski with bipartisan support. Uh, this bill would allow us to access our resources on the East Coast, the West Coast, the Gulf of Mexico, and the North, the North Seas of Alaska, the Beaufort and Chukchi Sea area. Uh, this bill would make sure that we have the opportunity to create 54,000 jobs with the passage of this legislation, the Jobs and Energy Permitting Act. 54,000 jobs could be created across the United States if that bill were to pass 1 million barrels of oil a day could be brought online of American produced energy resources, creating American jobs and lowering the price at the pump, as was testified before the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Horace Greeley a couple hundred years ago said, uh, over a hundred years ago said that uh, go west. Uh, that's good advice and right now the west is leading by job creating <laughs> ideas and I hope that everybody takes the time to read a solid report put together by the Western Caucus that truly is about job creation, about getting our country back on track and making sure that we're taking an abysmal unemployment rate and that we're driving that down by creating jobs right in our own backyard, utilizing the resources and the opportunities that we have in the West and throughout the United States. Well, I'm happy to join my colleagues in raising some of these issues that are so important. You know, la later tonight we're going to hear from the President. He'll offer, I think, more of the same failed economic policies that he's been pushing since he took office. And what we need to look at are new solutions that we know will promote economic growth and create jobs. And that's what the Western Caucus Jobs Frontier Report is all about, putting forward solutions to create jobs and get more Americans back to work. Western states are not immune to this weakened economy, but many of our states, such as my home state of Utah, have uh, lower un uh, unemployment rates than the national average, and of course this can help lead us to economic prosperity. Now, one such area in the West is domestic energy production. 
we in Utah had a, over 130 projects that lit parcels of land that were up for auction. We'd gone through years and years of jumping through environmental hoops, some estimate as high as seven years. And we finally got complete approval by BLM, and then all of a sudden the Southern Utah Wilderness Alliance sued to stop those parcels, to stop some 77 of them, and in federal court, and then all of a sudden the Secretary of Interior came and just lifted those 77 like, he prejudged the case, lifted, we would have won that case by the way, and, and lifted those 77 parcels out and stifled uh, economic development in my home state of Utah. We know that Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming have somewhere between 800, 800 billion and 1.6 trillion barrels of oil in oil shale, and it's recoverable. It was odd to me that people from Estonia came to visit me in my office to talk about developing Utah oil shale because Estonia has been developing its own oil shale for 90 years. Then a company from Brazil came to talk to me because they've been developing oil shale for a number of years themselves, and yet we're stifled here. The president likes to promote green energy companies, like the one that just announced that it was going bankrupt last week, in which all kinds of money went down the drain. But he should not do it at the detriment of American-made energy that's been creating jobs uh, for centuries. Now, we have American energy sitting on the sidelines under acres and acres of federally controlled land that's ripe for production, and President Obama and his liberal allies continue to keep it closed off uh, to play into his anti-oil agenda at a time when we need energy and energy costs are going off the chart. And it's only getting worse. Rather than streamline an over-bureaucratic system, the Bureau of Land Management would add a whole new layer of red tape that is completely unnecessary, very expensive, and duplicative. The Western Energy Alliance recently released a survey that found that $1 billion has already been shifted away from the Rockies and that $3 billion in future investments will continue to be uh, uh, shifted to other regions. Now, that needs to stop. Harnessing American energy creates American jobs to help American families. It's a win-win-win for our economy. Increasing affordable American energy is just one of the eight planks of his jobs report. Now, I'm pleased to stand here with these wonderful colleagues of ours to unveil these uh, forward-thinking proposals, and I'm pleased to work with them to develop the next frontier of job uh, creation efforts for our, for our country. And it isn't just energy. It's our farmers and ranchers. It's our recreation people. Utah's owned about 70 percent by both the federal and state government, mostly federal government, and we're stifled in being able to do things that would help feed our families and help this country pull out of the economic morass that it's in. So I want to thank uh, uh, the leaders of our caucus here and, and express my gratitude and appreciation for, for them in leading uh, these type of efforts. Thank you. Pat Roberts. Thank you. <coughs> As others have said, I, I want to thank John and Steve for riding point on the Western Caucus, uh, Steve in the House and uh, John in the, uh, in the Senate. I'm from Dodge City, Kansas, and if that ain't West, why, uh, something's really dreadfully wrong. <laughs> At any rate, uh, not west enough, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just don't come inside the city limits. <laughs> At any rate, you know, Marshall Dillon will, uh, will take you on. This is going to get a little technical. I am also the ranking Republican on the sometimes powerful Senate Agriculture Committee. <laughs> and we need Senate action. I mean, this is something we shouldn't be doing, and we have a bill to fix it, and yet we can't seem to get traction uh, here with the majority leader. Uh, we need action on a bill called H.R. 872. H.R. 72, write that one down. Prior to October 31, we have a deadline to deal with. Uh, in order for public health officials, uh, underscore that. Public uh, health officials, we got a lot of devastation from the hurricane, a lot of pools of water sitting around everywhere, and a lot of mosquitoes. And mosquitoes are famous for carrying all sorts of infectious diseases that we don't want. Farmers, uh, right now we're in the middle of a drought in Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas. On the other side of the state, we're putting up sandbags still on the, uh, on the Missouri River. And uh, farmers have to apply a pesticide from time to time to save their crop. Ranchers, same thing with their livestock. Uh, foresters, same thing with trying to protect uh, 
or trees. And for that matter, anybody who wishes to spray a pesticide near water to be protected from uh, burdensome EPA permits, they're brand new, they're unnecessary. Let me point out that if you are applying a rodenticide, a pesticide, an insecticide, whatever side, uh, you are already regulated under something called the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, FIFRA. Uh, FIFRA is a wonderful bill. Uh, I have had to deal with it in six farm bills, and uh, you uh, really get to know lab rats on a uh, personal basis. <laughs> the House has already acted and passed H.R. 872 with strong bipartisan support. The Senate Agriculture Committee reported H.R. 872 with bipartisan support, only one vote against it. We are now waiting on uh, Leader Reed to bring H.R. 872 to the Senate floor for a vote. If we do not act before October 31, here's what happens. A mere 54 days from today, EPA estimates approximately 365,000 pesticide applicators will need permits, individual permits that they have to fill out, about 23 pages, to cover about 5.6 million applications per year, costing hardworking Americans about 50 million bucks. That's just unnecessary. EB estimates uh, this will require one million hours to implement each and every year. This is the kind of thing that people have been talking about when they go to a meeting, and you cannot go to a meeting without somebody standing up and hitching up their belt and saying Pat or John or Steve or whatever, uh, Oren, uh, and, and, and saying, well, what are you doing back there passing all these regulations that are about to put us out of business and that don't make any sense? And many times, uh, you know, we used to say, did you read the bill? And then they said, did you read the regulations? Now they're saying, are you aware of the regulations? Well, we're, the, we're aware of this one, and we're going to try to fix it. Now, this is a burdensome uh, requirement, nothing but a paperwork exercise. It provides no additional environmental be uh, benefit. In fact, it could create a public health crisis by limiting quick responses from public health officials responding to a pest outbreak such as mosquitoes. So uh, we may have to put a jar of mosquitoes on Harry's desk and take the lid off and uh, see if we can get some action here. So I encourage Senator Reid to act on this. Uh, this is an easy one, and uh, it could cost us a lot if we don't act. Thanks, guys, and it's a pleasure to ride drag. They're riding point. I didn't get the, uh, I didn't get the dress code, uh, uh, you know, blue side out. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll be very brief. Uh, Senator Hatch uh, mentioned that Utah is 70 percent publicly owned, federal and state. Arizona is 87 percent uh, publicly owned with the reservations and whatnot. So it's very difficult if the federal government stands in the way. They can really hold. Senator McCain mentioned the uh, H.R. 1904, the Southeast Area or Arizona Land Exchange and Conservation Act. Simply by doing this land exchange, it will lead to creation of some 4,000 jobs and also give the federal government control of some very environmentally, environmentally sensitive areas uh, that it doesn't have control of now. So it's a net plus uh, for the environment, um, and it also will create jobs in Arizona. It's one area where the federal government, if it just steps back, jobs will be created. So I commend uh, John and Steve and everyone who's put this together, and uh, glad to stand with you. Thank you. Take questions. Take questions. Well, we, we want specifics. We just don't want more spending, which we know doesn't work, hasn't worked in the past. Uh, we want to hear that he understands the impact, the heavy wet blanket that regulations are on our job creators. We need to make it easier and cheaper for the private sector to create jobs. And it seems what comes out of the White House makes it uh, harder and more expensive uh, to create private sector jobs. I don't know if Warren wants to talk about that. Or? Well, it depends on whether it's conglomerated with a whole bunch of other stuff we can't support. Uh, we're all, I think most of us are for tax cuts, and that would amount to a tax cut. As you know, it was the Schumer-Hatch bill that was one of the first bills passed in this administration. But let me just say a couple other things uh, since you asked that question. I'm hoping that he'll bring with him the three trade agreements, free trade agreements for Korea, Colombia, and Panama, and submit them so that we can vote on them up here in the United States Senate and the House of Representatives. Should we pass those free trade agreements, that will create upwards of 250,000 new jobs. 
I can't for the life of me understand why this has gone on and on and on for this long. To get that done, it seems that Senator Reid is going to have to amend the GSP that's just been sent over by the House, uh, the generalized system uh, of preferences and so forth. He's going to have to amend that since it's a, a money bill from the House with the TAA and then send it back to the House so that we can ultimately get this done. But number one, I'd sure like to get those three trade agreements done, and I hope that he uh, brings them with him, the hand to the leadership right up here in, in the United States. And there's so many other things we could talk about that, that uh, really would help us with jobs, help us with uh, uh, the economy, but that's one I just wanted to bring up. Well, given the Democrat-controlled Senate, how, what do you think the future of these, this, this package really is? You mean the trade agreements, or? Yeah, all, all of the whole jobs package is going to have to be approved by the Senate. And, and well, I think everybody would like to see some, uh, some legislation that would help create jobs. There's no question, I think almost every, I think every Republican would like to see these free trade agreements brought up that have been delayed. They were promised before we went on recess in August, and we're still not there. And every time we turn around, they want something else added to it. So. Uh, I, I believe the President's sincere in wanting to do that, but I was shocked a week ago when he su suggested that we ought to pass those, uh, those bills. We can't pass them without him submitting them under the rules. So I'm hoping, hopeful he'll bring them up, submit them today, and then we go from there. Uh, there are so many other things that we could do to create jobs in this, uh, in this country, uh, and uh, the payroll deduction is just one of them, but uh, I hope it's not conglomerated with a bunch of other things that can't be accepted and won't create jobs. Uh, let me add to your question uh, that uh, in addition to what both senators said, I would like to see the President go ahead and address in his State of the Union, he said adequately that our corporate taxes are so high, we're, we're the second highest in the world uh, since that time Japan has lowered theirs. Uh, and it really we need to take action there so that we remain competitive and we're able to keep the jobs here rather than sending them overseas because of tax policy. Yeah, there's another press conference at 11.30, so thank you very much for being here. Thank Appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.